Well, we've been working on this for now almost three years, but the idea is very much older. In fact, if I trace it back, it goes back to the mid 70s when a number of uh, people who are sort of helped part set up the IHS uh, were involved in setting up New Bombay. New Bombay. Okay. So one of the things that they learnt out of the New Bombay experiment at that time was that if you want to do transformative things about India, uh, you have to work in interdisciplinary teams. You can't be either a planner or an engineer or a finance person. The idea is that this country needs to transform. Uh, it, you need to build an entire new generation of change makers and entrepreneurs who, who can enable the transition. So when we started working on, let's say, on our curriculum, the big question we asked each other was, what is it that young people need to know that can enable them to change India in the late 2020s? Because if they go into a program now, in the next few years, they'll become mid-career, you know, another 10, 15 years. That's when they'll really have the power to make the change. Uh, and the, the, the India of tomorrow is not necessarily going to be the India of today. We're not a planning school, we're not an architecture school, we're not a management school. But will all of these be addressed? Exactly. So this is a, this is a completely new profession that we're creating. Uh, we're, calling it, uh, we're calling these people urban practitioners. These are people who would actually work on the ground to make the change. Uh, but you know, the interesting thing is that in a world that's changing very fast, uh, the only thing that's really constant is theory. Uh, so they have to be grounded in theory and we're actually going to uh, bring to them and with them an understanding not only of uh, you know architecture and planning and technology but also very centrally of management of law and governance which very few people teach and centrally the social sciences economics sociology politics history because the critical questions that we have to address are questions of why not only a question of how Absolutely. So inclusion is a very important part of what we're talking about. So unlike uh, you know much of what we have in the country, where you build really high-quality institutions, but they create a separate elite, our vision is that we're going to try and draw in large numbers of people. So if we're going to be trying to educate, let's say, whatever, 50,000 or 100,000 people on campus, mm -hmm. uh, and sort of reach out to maybe four or five times that amount off campus, we're talking about uh, being an, uh, an institution that reaches out to small towns and villages. It's fundamentally different. And it's not only India, but it's also South Asia. Okay. Uh, so South Asia is quite particular. So we're urbanizing at a much lower rate than uh, our sort of per capita GDP should show us. Um, so we're, you know, we're about 30% urbanized at the moment. We should have been much more at this level of, of development and the kind of growth we're seeing. Uh, and that's been a conundrum for a lot of people uh, you know, in the academic sphere of why that's happening why our migration rates are not as high as they, they should be in spite of the agrarian crisis, rural poverty and, and a whole range of things like that. One reason for that of course is that our cities have not been working for most of the, most of the people. Cities are highly extraordinary places. It's the kind of thing where people come to the cities are disenchanted and then move back or they are... No, they're not even, I mean, we're not creating jobs in the formal sector. Uh, we have sort of half deindustrialized our cities. Uh, for an economy that's growing so rapidly and needs goods and services, if we're going to be importing a lot of our, our goods and not developing enough of them because we're pushing them outside our urban boundaries, uh, we have an interesting challenge there. We've been focused a lot on our metropolitan cities and we've forgotten that the places that are really growing and changing uh, are the smaller towns.